last video, I finished up the back of this project. If you want to see it and you missed the video, go check it out. It turned out way better than I could have ever imagined. But this week we're back to the front, the front of the project. This area back behind the crow's nest that I installed a couple videos ago, there is a console area. This is supposed to be the main computer control center of this entire cargo bay that I'm building. My goal in this video is to finish every single thing that needs to be done in this part of the project, especially the console because it's going to be incredibly eye-catching. But the first thing I'm going to do is finish installing the door that I installed on the other side last week. It needs to go right there. So let's get started. I 3D printed and prepped the location for this door in the last video. This door is going to be different from any of the ones I previously installed because I am trying to have an LED light that's going to light up the area in the door that looks green. I'm hoping it works. It should light up on both sides of this foam wall. To glue this on, I'm using some tacky glue, which didn't really work to be honest it just didn't have enough surface area to grab hold of so i continued to use the tacky glue but then also supported it with some hot glue and once it was holding itself in place i went around the edge with some liquid leading this doesn't have any lead in it it's just a product that helps seal up any gaps Speaking of gaps, I now need to connect the front part of the door frame with the back part of the door frame. You can still see quite a bit of ruggedly cut foam between the two pieces. To do this, I'm using a bunch of paper. The paper is going to do a good job of covering up these edges and blending into the door frame. So once I have everything measured and glued in place, I'm going to cover it with some more black Mod Podge. And then I also need to create a place that looks like some doors could come out because this is supposed to look like a door that is open. All of the closed doors look like they have these diagonal line doors that go into the wall. So I wanted to create something that gave the appearance of that. So I added in these extra two strips of cardboard and now I'm just going to paint them and try to blend everything in so it looks like a cohesive door. My paper didn't glue completely flat like I wanted it to, but for the moment I think it's looking okay and definitely reads as an open door in a spaceship. While I was working on the one in the wall, I also attached this one to the side of the captain's quarters. It does not actually open, it's just there for looks, so it coincides with the door that's on the inside of the captain's quarters area. Now I can add back in all of the structure to make sure that the door frame actually works with the floor, because the floor is a little higher on this side than the other side. The next thing I need to do is make a stairway down into the captain's quarters itself, otherwise the captain's just going to have to jump down and hopefully aim for the door. So I'm adding back in the crow's nest so I can see how much room I have for a platform and for the stairs. Off camera, I'm going to build the stair platforms because I did this quite a bit in the last couple of videos. This is how it's looking. I also added a magnet into one side. You can kind of see the outline of it in this clip. And then I'm going to be adding some pin nails to the side of my platform so that my platform can magnetize to this area. To do this, I just lined up the magnet and then took a Sharpie and tried to mark out where the magnet was going to hit. I have to add the pin nails because these frames are aluminum and the magnet does not want to magnetize to the aluminum frames. I'm just adding on this piece of paper with the pin nails glued to the back with tacky glue and then I'm going to use my hot glue to add a bunch to the back area so that no one can rip this paper off. It's going to be on there permanently. Now you can see how the stairs look once they are installed. It's not perfect but it works because the bottom part of the platform sits on top of the dressing room. While I'm letting the stairs completely dry 100%, I'm gonna to get to work on the console. This console was created for me by Lori Heisler in a collaboration that we did. I will link her video down below if you wanna see how it was built. It's got all sorts of switches and levers and screens and it lights up and it's really, really cool. 
when she created this for me, I really didn't have a lot of information to give her because I didn't know how I wanted to lay out this area. So I am gonna have to modify it just a little bit. Really all I'm going to do is just try and cut off one little corner so you can see the door frame. But then I want to build onto it and build around it. So it's actually built into the project and is one big console piece that just sits in place. I'm really excited to get this one in and get it lit up. I think it's really going to be eye catching in this area. So let's do it. Note to editing era. This is when you want to put in the idea photos. I'm still doing that process where I draw on top of photos of my project and that's been working really well. I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to go more with the version on the right. They're pretty similar, but the one on the right is a bit more simplified and just has cargo on the top instead of more built in panels. So the first thing I'm going to do, as I said, was cut down one of the sides. I thought I was going to cut down both sides, but the side on the left is going to become a wall for the extra built-in piece. Lori uses really strong materials for her builds, so I had to do this by hand. It took me quite a while, but it was the way I could make sure and not destroy any part of this console. So I cut through the MDF on the right side, and I'm just going to sand it down to make it really smooth. But now you'll be able to see the door frame and it won't look so crowded in that area. I'm also going to be closing off the leg space area just so you don't see all the way back to the foam board. And then I am going to be covering the top and continuing the top of this piece over to that aluminum column that you see. I'm using some matte board pieces as a way to build up a pattern. And the reason I'm doing this over paper is because the matte board holds its shape a little bit better, especially since I'm trying to create this pattern up in the air above where there's no supports. Once I was happy with it, I could recut it into an actual shape and it fit really well. I'm going to glue this on top of the console inside of my project just to make sure I don't have any movement. I don't accidentally glue it in a wrong way to where the console doesn't fit exactly where I want it to inside of the project. I added some one, two, three blocks and let it dry. Once it was dry, I could lift it out of the project and work on it on my desk. I'm going to be adding some walls to this piece by using mat board and just starting to fill this in to make it one complete unit. This was a long and messy process as you will see my desk gets messier and messier, but it was definitely worth it because it does give it that built in sleek look that I'm going for. I also had to account for part of the aluminum frame, just like I did on the shelf I built in the last video. I had to leave a cutout so that I could fit this piece in place and not disrupt the structure that's already there. So here's how it's looking. I had to do a dry fit before I went much further. And then I could measure out the remaining opening on the front because I plan to add a bunch of little compartments with doors and it's going to be much easier to laser cut this and make it look the way I want it to look. This part of the project is inspired by my friend Brad. He sent me this photo as an idea of like little food compartments. I think they did this in the 50s or 60s. And then the image he sent me immediately reminded me of Flight of the Navigator in that moment where the main character is walking around the ship, looking around, and he sees all these little compartments with creatures. And so that's what I want to create here. I laser cut the openings for the compartments and then I went ahead and traced on some acetate so that I'd have these pre-cut for later on when I finish the doors. The doors are laser cut as well, and I tried to make some spaceshipy looking handles for them, and then I could start gluing everything together. I'm holding off on putting the plastic into the doors for now because of the next step, which is going to be a lot of painting. I need to paint this so it all looks like one cohesive piece. So I'm laying down a layer of black Mod Podge over all of the things that I have added. I am going to be leaving the inside of the console that Lori made all black, but then I'm going to go around the edges with silver and I'm going to paint the front of the new compartments that I just added all silver. And of course I have to age things up, so I'm doing a layer of watered down black paint to get into all the crevices and I'm going over any areas that I painted silver on the console as well. 
Now I can add in the windows without worrying about getting any paint on them. I just cut out the shapes that I previously traced, which made this process so much easier. It'd be incredibly difficult to try and figure out how big they needed to be at this point. Once they're all in place, I can start the process of dividing them up into individual compartments. There's really only going to be a few compartments, even though the doors make it look like there are many. Only one of them is going to be away from the light, which is going to be on the left side of the cabinet. And I have a very special plan for that compartment itself. I'm painting the inside with a matte black paint. So once I put the things inside of these compartments, those are what you're focusing on and not the walls. I'm also going to do a test with the lighting. I cut a hole in the very base of this compartment and now I'm just trying to make sure that the light string that I plan to put in there will fit. There's a small hole in each compartment floor which allows the light to pass through it. This is the easiest way I could come up with lighting these panels without having to do individual LEDs for each part. And as you can see, it does light up each one, except for the one that's closest to the console on the very top right. That one's going to be a dark area. So I want to add in a reference to that Flight of the Navigator clip where the eyeball shows up. I think that will be a really fun Easter egg in this project. I also have these coral pieces that were sent along with the captain. They were made by Michaelina, who also created the captain herself. So they are going to be incorporated into these little environments inside of the compartments. I tried to find ones that would fit them the best, and then I got the idea to try and make it look like a watery environment on the inside. So I did a few experiments with some different types of paint, and I have lost my glass paint again. I don't know why I cannot keep track of my glass paint. So I decided to try and recreate it with some diamond glaze and some watercolor paint. And that did work really well, actually. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind because then I can create a few more colors than I had previously in my just small glass paint set. So what I'm going to do is paint the back of these windows with this watercolor mixed with diamond glaze, and I'm hoping it will give a watery look once it's lit up. You may notice I also painted one of the areas red. That one is really, really pigmented, and I think it looks cool once the pieces are inside. I'm going to use a variety of floor coverings such as sand and moss to cover some of the bases here because as I said I'm trying to make it an environment. So for the coral it's going to have some sand on the floor of its compartment and then the other areas are going to have some moss where it looks like there's more plant life going on. And for the eyeball in the side compartment I am using what is basically just epoxy sculpt. Whenever I finish using my epoxy sculpt and I have any left over, it's going to cure anyway, so I just roll it into a ball and put it into this small drawer, and it's come in handy now. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be painting it with some white paint to give it the eyeball look, and then some other paints on top of that to give it an iris, and then I'm going to glaze it with some diamond glaze. To make it look like it's floating in the compartment, I'm going to be painting the little discs it's sitting on with a matte black so it blends in with the background. You will be able to see it just a little bit if you're staring, but ultimately, mostly you will just see a floating eyeball in that area. So here's how it's looking so far. I have a mossy, grassy area in the center, and I really love how the coral came out. I'm going to permanently install the lights now because I do need to close up the back, so I want to make sure the lights are in place. I made it flush with the bottom so the bottom of the console can sit flat, but that does mean in the future when I need to connect the rest of the light string, I am going to have to cut a hole in the floor where it connects at the bottom, which is fine with me. That's what I've planned all along. Now that the lights are in place, I can cover up the back. I'm using some black matte board for this, and I'm not going to glue it too much in place. I'm going to lightly glue it in place in case anything comes loose and I need to access it later. For the top of this console, I'm going to be adding some more of this black grating because it is going to be another storage area, so I want to match the floor that's going on around it. 
to do this I am painting it a silver and then of course I will age it once the crates and all of the cargo are on top. Now for the grand finale of this section of the video, we can put this piece in place and see how it looks. I think the silver all around it really helps it meld with the rest of the project because we have a silver floor, we have silver columns, and I think everything is starting to come together. This is such an awkward place to stand. We'll probably still be adding some other details to the console, like some maps laying around, and I also need to add all of the cargo on top of it. But for now, I'm letting that kind of sit while I think about things, and I need to move on to the next project, which is just below the console area. It is connecting this large piece, the captain's quarters, to the dressing room. It's something I've needed to make for a while. It's like a little accordion hallway. It will barely even be seen. Barely. But those who will see and look there will notice that the two rooms are not even connected. There's doors, but there's no connection. So I have to connect those now. I'm going to make the accordion hallways separate, and then I'm going to use the pin nail and magnet method to attach them to the rooms. So let's do that now. I had to scroll so far back in my Tinkercad files to find this file because I had made it so long ago. I've been meaning to make these hallways for such a long time. But these were 3D printed and I specifically left them with openings for pin nails. I'm going to be covering one side with some paper and then the other side has the opening where I can add these pin nails in. Pin nails actually go into a nail gun if you're not familiar with them and all they're going to do is give me a metallic surface that my magnets that I add later on can hold on to. Once they're inserted with tacky glue, I'm going to cover them with some hot glue as well, just to give them a little bit more strength. Now I can start adding the fabric, which is going to help make what I'm calling an accordion hallway. If anyone was actually going to have to walk down these hallways or it was going to have to have any structural strength, I would be doing this a different way. But because these are purely for aesthetics, all I have to do is wrap the fabric around the frame and glue it in place. Once I have one side wrapped, I can add in the other side really carefully, and I'm leaving about an eighth to a quarter inch worth of fabric left on the side. This is because I'm going to be adding glue and slowly folding the fabric over the edge so that it has a finished look when it touches the wall. You will notice that the frames that I created, the side that I added the paper on is the side that is facing out. So here's how it looks once it's finished. I have a little accordion looking frame and here is a bigger one. I need two different sizes and they are ready to go into the project. These are done. So now it's everybody's favorite part of the videos that I've been making recently where we take everything apart. Again, put it together, take it apart, put it together, take it apart. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. The next step of this process was to install the magnets so that my hallways would magnetize to the side of the project. So with a pencil, I just simply laid out where the magnets needed to go, and then I added them into the foam, covered them with another piece of paper, and in some places, some tape where it was going to be stuck to vinyl. And then the magnets were installed, my pin nails took hold, and they were ready to go into the project. Again, like I said, this is something that's going to barely be seen, but for those who are very curious, for those with an eagle eye, they will have noticed that these were not connected and it would have been kind of, you know, taken people out of the project. Here's one you can barely see, but it is there. There is a connection to that door, so now everything makes sense. And at this point, I was starting to realize I really needed to switch out the base of what the captain's quarters is currently sitting on. Right now, it's on a low table, but I think it would be better on the Adams Family base, mainly because the Adams Family base has wheels, and I'm about to start working on a very complicated part of the project. The lighting and being able to move it around is going to be key. 
I added in some cardboard into the front area that's inset for the Adams Family front lawn. This will help the captain's quarters sit flat, and then Mr. Technology helped me move it over. As you will see, it is pretty light. I can lift one side of it with one hand. It is made out of foam, but it's nice to have someone else help me move it over because uh, it is rather cumbersome. Now I need to do some more wiring and lighting, and this time I plan to try and do a lot of it myself. Wish me luck. The first step of this process was to mark a line underneath that second floor platform so I know how much room I actually have to work with. Then of course, take everything apart. I'm going to be working again with one of these green power distribution blocks. This is the same thing that I used to power the lights inside of my model ship display. I'm going to be connecting a bunch of LEDs to either side, but this is also going to light up my console that Lori made for me. It has a USB connection, so we had to find another piece that would connect and allow me to plug in a USB. So this will make that happen. I'm going to use Velcro to install these pieces as well because that turned out to be such a handy feature the first time I did it with the model ship display. This means I can pull it out when I need to to get a better look at what I'm trying to work on. In the last video when I worked on lighting like this, I actually didn't work on it, Mr. Technology did. But this time I am going to be doing it myself. I sat down with Mr. Technology and he walked me through all the things that I was doing to help me connect everything. I really only had to walk through everything once and then I could do it myself. So I'm adding these little ferrules, 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 <laughs> something like that, to the ends of these wires. It's going to make a much better connection when I put it into this green connector box. I'm not going to be doing this as a tutorial, so please don't try to follow anything that I'm doing. I'm just showing you that I'm doing it myself, and I don't even know if we would use a setup like this again in a dollhouse. It's just something that turned out to be the best thing to do for the captain's quarters unique needs. I will try to do a tutorial in the future when I'm a little bit more comfortable with working with electronics, but for now I'm happy with my very basic knowledge that I learned in this project. So now I have the plug connected to the junction box and I have the USB thingy connected to it. So in theory, this should all work. And in the future, I'm gonna add the LEDs to the rest of this space. Here you can see my Sharpie line and my Velcro installment into the back, and I can test the console before it even goes into the project just to double check on the desk that everything's working. And here you can see it is lighting up and it's kind of having a dance party on its own there. I'm gonna have to remember all the settings and how to get it a single color but it is very exciting to see it all lit up. And I'm also going to plug in a string of LED lights that you can see everything together. So this is going to be my complete console display for the upper area in the left side portion of the captain's quarters. I'm now gonna work with some LED lights and some very ancient Radio Shack solder. This is how long Mr. Technology has been soldering. He showed me how to lengthen the LED wires. The reason they need to be lengthened is so that they can reach all the way from the power distribution block over to the red lanterns that I added in the last video. I am soldering, these are my hands, soldering the connection between the wires, and it wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. <laughs> I had to do both sides, the positive and the negative, I think that's correct. And then I covered them with some heat shrink to protect the solder and shrunk it with my heat gun. And that is one complete wire ready to go into my project. The end that connects to the power distribution blocks, I'm going to add some of those ferrules and they'll just plug in just like the other ones did. So here's a little video of me working away on my soldering and I am just so happy that I have learned a new skill. I've overcome some fear. Let me know down in the comments if you have a certain skill you're wanting to overcome and kind of power through. It's really exciting when you can finally do it yourself. And I also was able to connect the wires for this upper door area that needs to have a light. This was a little bit more complicated because I was trying not to melt the foam and I was trying not to get any solder anywhere, but I was able to do that and extend that wire as well. 
Now that the soldering is done, it's time to connect all the wires to the power distribution block. Again, that's the green thing that's under the door. It's pretty easy to unscrew one of the connectors and then push in the ferrules that I already added. I really am not sure if I'm saying that correct, <laughs> but we're continuing on. And then once it's plugged in, the lights should come on as easy as that. So I'm very excited. I had my door light come on and then I slowly added each lantern in one at a time. Then it was time to double check everything was working along with the USB connection and the lantern lights. Everything turned on. I was so happy. I don't quite have the LED strips in yet, but that's okay. We're going one bit at a time, especially when it comes to electricity. I like to take it slow and make sure everything is working. And in this video, the console is having a party with me. <laughs> We're both really excited to finally have this in place. Speaking of the LED strip lighting, that's something else I need to tackle in this video because it's going to play a pretty major role in this area of the captain's quarters project. So the first thing I'm doing is blacking out some of the lights I don't want with some electrical tape. And then I had a couple comments on my last video to try using these plastic straws for the lighting. And I did try to fit the lights through the straws and they just barely don't fit. So what I decided to do is cut a slit in the side of the straw so that I could slide the lighting into the straw. And that worked really well. I won't say it was exactly easy to get the lights in there, but it did work and it makes a really cool effect that I think goes along with the spaceship feel. I liked it so much that I decided to add another one of these lights on the opposite side of the console area. I added one inside of the crow's nest, then the light strip goes under the floor, it goes up the back of these columns, through the straw, down through the console area, under the floor again, through these connectors that go all the way up this column, through another straw, and then back down this strip of lights where it will connect to a light in the back. So that's how the lights are currently running, and here is the mess I've created throughout all of this chaos. But I'm really grateful I was able to stick through this part of the project and get the lights running, and here it is with everything lit up so far, and I just had to take a moment to turn out my studio lights and admire what had been done at this moment. called in Mr. Technology to check the lights and I totally forgot that these light up here so I plugged those in but we're gonna leave them on for a few hours just to make sure that nothing smokes, nothing pops, uh, that there aren't any weird smells. Uh, Mr. Technology went around and touched all the connections and made sure that nothing was getting too overheated so here we go. This is getting closer to the end of the lighting. Are you gonna do the update? Oh, you're not? Okay. I'll be honest, yesterday I hit a wall with this project. I wanted to take about a week off and not look at it anymore. <laughs> I got the lighting done, which was super exciting. It was really cool to see the lanterns light up and get the console finally plugged in. But then it came to cable management of trying to get everything to work and have all of the cords go that way so that when it gets to the museum, it's easy to plug in. This involved some destruction and some repairing, but ultimately I got it done. A couple of videos ago, I even cut a groove in the back of the project here to help move some wires and I had to patch that up. I was actually kind of proud of my patch job, so I took a photo, but it's now covered up with black Mod Podge, so it kind of blends in a little bit. And then the cord that I left a hole for here is now relocated underneath the stairs here. It's just what needed to happen. The cord management is now done. Everything plugs in. I think at some point I will have to draw a map 
to map out where all the chords go and what lights they actually go to. Right now it's all in my head and I'm not even sure I know all of that information. I don't think I could I don't think I could draw a map from memory. I would have to look at the project to know where the chords are going. So now that I have busted through that wall, I am ready to continue on and I am going to be adding in some maps and some other items to really make the console area look lived in. One of the other things I did, which I'm very proud of, is I stuck all the remotes on one piece of foam board so I don't have to go looking for them anymore. There are so many, three of them on the left, they control the LED strip lighting and the black one on the right controls the console. So hopefully now they'll be a lot harder to lose. Just like in last week's video, I wanna add some signage around this area some warning signs and also some room signage so you know which room you're looking at. I also have so many maps that were sent in over the years along with the books so I'm going to be adding those in as well after all this is the console and the crow's nest is where all the time traveling goes on so it makes sense to me that there would be maps just about everywhere. I also have this console board that I created in a live stream and that's going to go over here in this corner just across from the desk so it's easy for whoever's at the helm to control it. I have this upper cargo area with a pillow for Centauri and these lower cargo boxes, all of those need to be aged. And because this video is getting really long and you've seen me glue pieces of paper to other things many times, I am going to fast forward gluing all of these things down and aging them so that you can see the final results. Before I end the video, I need to say a big thank you to Fran, Fran Made Miniatures. She saw my video where I said I wasn't completely happy with the captain's luggage in the dressing room. She was so kind to send me some of her own handmade luggage or Fran Made luggage. And so I am going to put that into the dressing room. It fits the captain's quarters so much better than the teal luggage I had before. Thank you so much for sending that in, Fran. The captain is gonna love it. I also want to reach out to any of my audience members, anyone who's watched this channel. If you are in the Tucson area or could be in the Tucson area, Monday, November 6th, you're invited to come to a little reception where the captain's quarters will be on display for the first time. The museum has been so kind to open up this opportunity for anyone who has been watching and is able to get there to come and meet me, hang out, have some snacks, and see the project. It is by invitation only, so if you are interested, you will have to email me so I can get your name on the list. There's a limited number that can be invited just because of logistics. So if you are able to get there, email me at the email you will find down below in the description box. It's underneath the title. Sometimes you have to click the little arrow to open it up. Let me know you plan on being there and I will get you all the information and get your name on the list for the museum. Huge thank you to the Mini Time Machine for allowing this to happen. I think it will be really fun. 
As it's kind of become tradition in these final wrap up videos, I'm going to go ahead and update my list of things I need to do, crossing out the things I got finished in this video, and then I'm going to use my highlighter to figure out what I need to do in the next one. The next one's going to be really fun because it has a lot to do with the captain's story, and these two items are very related. Next week's video will be over the Infinity Hall area, which is the other side of the project. So I worked on the console area, this is the other side, and I need to sculpt something new for that section. So it's going to be an exciting one. So make sure you join me, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications if you want to make sure you don't miss any updates. I hope you all have an amazing week, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Oompa, 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 do, do. Okay, 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 okay. Too much stuff. Okay. I was just a mess, wasn't it? Move out of the way! Move out of the way! So now that I have busted through, so now that I have busted through that wall, Grrr!